dulcet tones. How lovely. Yes, kind of. <gasps> oh, fudge! What am I talking about? This is what caused those tremors. It's a melody of death. Oh my god! Oh my god, 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 god. Why should I be afraid of a few puny earthquakes? What the hell? Are you afraid of that? Shit. <laughs> Welcome back everyone to my third and final review of the Halloween season for 2019. Shadows of the Dam was released in 2011 for the Xbox 360 and the PS3. It was developed by Grasshopper Manufacturer, known for more popular games such as Lollipop Chainsaw and Killer7. The game was a brainchild of Gochi Suda and Shinju Mikami, who you might remember from the development of Vanquish, another game I reviewed earlier. Well, Suda is known for his punk rock style, but Mikami is known for his psychological action thriller style. And this game is a combination of both styles. And you really see it through the visualizations and music that is chosen throughout this game. The story for Shadows of the Dam is a typical damsel in the distress story. You start off as playing as Garcia Hotspur, a demon hunter, whose girlfriend Paula is abducted by the Lord of Demons, Fleming. Now, Fleming takes Paula due to Garcia's constantly killing of his demon henchmen. He eventually takes her down to the underworld or hell where Garcia pursues by jumping down there. He is aided by his friend Johnson, who is a former demon himself, who helps guide him throughout the game. Now, the movement controls are pretty typical of any side scrolling or 3D game as the left joystick moves you and the right joystick adjust your camera as you go. Pulling on a left trigger actually brings up your gun to aim it and firing it is done with the right trigger. You can also fire a light shot by bumping the left bumper. This now lights up places that are dark and also removes darkness from enemies as you progress. You're going to need to get used to this as the aiming is kind of choppy at first, but once you get used to it, it doesn't really hinder your gameplay. The directional pad can be used to switch between different weapons, whether they be a shotgun, machine gun, or even a pistol. While holding Y, along with the directional pad, lets you choose your health items, which is represented by alcohol. Yes, apparently in hell, you can't die by alcohol. It actually replenishes you. There are three types of alcohol. Saki, which is more restores our small health, Kilo, which restores medium health, and Absent, which restores large health. Also hitting the left bumper with nothing equipped will also use that power up, so you can continuously use it as many bottles as you have. Your main weapon is Johnson, who can be used as a lantern to light the way and can be used as a way to stun your enemies by tapping the B button, or giving a more impactful attack by holding B and releasing. This is best used when surrounded by enemies, or when they're dark or darkened by the darkness, and to remove it by hitting that B button. Johnson can also be turned into several gun versions as mentioned earlier. He can be a pistol, a shotgun, or a machine gun. And these other guns can be attained from blue gems that are acquired from defeating VIPs or bosses. And you're going to need them to make it a little easier as you face more and more armored and tougher enemies along with bosses in the future. These items, along with health and light shot, can be upgraded by finding red gems that are hidden throughout the game. However, if you can't find them, you can also buy them, as you acquire white gems from enemies after killing them. You can buy them along with ammo and health items from Christopher, a half-demon, half-human merchant that makes funny dialogue in a southern accent. You can also buy items through vending machines, mostly ammo and health. So keep an eye out for those. The gameplay also has its share of puzzles within it. 
fucking hate puzzles. They can be solved by shooting several spots while in darkness, along with opening doors by taming several items, whether it be strawberries, a demon tree, which is kind of weird for hell, brains, eyeballs that are fed to the door, these little baby creatures that giggle when they get are fed and cry when they're not fed. So it's actually really, really interesting and kind of creepy as you play through the game. Now, Shadow of the Dam has a lot of cool features in it. It's mostly known as a third-person shooter, but there are also some other elements added to it, and a lot of homages are played, just like this. Doesn't this look familiar? Kind of reminds you of Ghosts and Goblins from NES, and I thought this is a real, real nice touch that the game developers add to it. Kind of a homage to Ghosts and Goblins, or those games where you were progressing through, you could see. Now, another cool thing about Shadows of the Dam is that not just being a third-person shooter, it actually becomes a second-person shooter. Now, to me, this is one of the coolest parts of the game, as it kind of looks like a Paper Mario feeling to it, as you kind of float in the air and you shoot your gun. And the cool thing is you actually keep the same weapons you have throughout the game, only that you will be moving your gun aiming-wise the same way with the right joystick, but it will go in an up and down area, and you will move your left joystick to move you up and down. And you also get power-ups along the way, whether it be a shotgun or a machine gun, and you also get a chance to pick up more white gems for currency. So that's a cool aspect of the game. And you also get to use your light shot later in the game, where there will be enemies that are covered by darkness or the goat heads that need to be lit for to get through. So it's another cool aspect and change of pace to the game that keeps the game flowing, in my opinion, very well. Another homage the game likes to have, which I think is really, really cool, is the homage to the evil dead as one of the missions is even called as evil as dead. You even get to go through the woods of the evil dead and you actually even eventually end up at Ash's cabin. And in the cabin, you can actually see they recreate the scene with a deadite in the basement. And this is really cool in my opinion, as the developers are big evil dead fans. As I said, they did name the chapter evil as dead. And there's also more reference to the evil dead as when you see Christopher later on, he said, I wouldn't have been stupid enough to run out that for a summer. So it's actually a nice little homage and I thought it was pretty cool just to go through it. So check out for other Easter eggs and see if you find anything else. Let me know down in the comments. And the final thing I think that really, really was great about the game is the banter between Garcia and Johnson as they're witty and very funny between them. It might be crude humor more for adult audiences, but it's something that is really, really funny. Check out this clip on the pavement and never forgot what he saw one bloody hand had formed a peace sign the other was giving him the finger it's like an Alanis Morissette song the end okay lovely I don't think I'll sleep for weeks <laughs> as you can see showing one clip does not do it justice but there are many storybooks around the game that can be used and read by either Garcia or Johnson and they're all pretty either creepy or pretty funny and their commentary to them is actually pretty funny. So if I were you, I would explore and check out everything you can as there's little Easter eggs like I said throughout the thing. Even there's even a reference to Ghostbusters when you get to the library level. So that's something cool to look forward to. Now, Shadow of the Dam is not a game for everyone, as it has its share of adult humor and even some nudity in it. Actually, a lot of nudity. So, I would stay away from this if you're under 18. But over 18, it's actually pretty funny as an adult, you can see a lot of the jokes that are made in here. Besides, the game is actually a pretty fun playthrough. The environments and storyline keep you entertained, making it quick. And it actually only took me about 7 hours to beat this game, so it was a really really quick playthrough and with the environments changing like I showed, it's a breeze and it's very entertaining. It's backwards compatible for the Xbox One. I picked up my copy for about 5 bucks off eBay. You can pick it up maybe even cheaper at GameStop, I was just too lazy to go. So check it out if you get a chance. As I stated in my first October review, I mentioned how Halloween has always played a big role in me growing up. It's always held a special place in my heart. So when I started to plan my schedule for this month, I usually do maybe one or two videos a month. I decided to push to three with time constraints. And I'm very happy to have completed 
all three of them. And I want to thank you very, very much for watching. As I know, it takes some time to go through these videos and listen to me ramble on. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. I want to wish you a very happy Halloween and have a great rest of your day.